On a timeless landscape, medicine men dance with a sacred totem, ranging across the center of a continent. Bison, champion of the prairie. This is a song of the Lakota Nation. The whole world is coming. A nation is coming. A nation is coming. Over the whole earth they are coming. The buffalo are coming. The buffalo are coming. The bison were everything to the Native Americans of the plains. Bison provided everything for life. Food, clothing, shelter, and was an important part of their spirituality. Across the plains, the native people wove the bison into their myths and legends. This is one of many stories. Long ago, a great famine had settled upon the nations of the plain. The land was dry, the grasses burnt, and the people were hungry. The animals, too, suffered. Many had died or moved away searching for food. Inside their teepees, the people of the plains smoked the pipe. As they presented the pipe to north, south, east, and west, tobacco smoke, which is holy, moved out into the universe with a plea for the animals to return. Though the people smoked the pipe, their prayers were not answered. The famine continued. Few had the strength even to leave their homes. Summoning what strength she had left, one young woman walked across the bleak landscape collecting firewood. As she picked up what twigs and branches she could find, a voice moved across the land, a slow, deliberate chant that the young woman had never heard before. The incantation drew her to a solitary tree. Nestled in the fork of that tree was a rock, and it was the rock that was calling to her. As was the custom of her people, the young woman offered up a handful of tobacco as a sign of respect. The voice spoke to her like a gentle wind. Carry me back to your people and teach them this song. Carry me back to your people and the bison will return.
So the young woman returned to her family, cradling in her arms the mystical rock that might be their salvation. In the tradition of her nation, the young woman presented the rock twice to the eldest member of her family. And the third time, he took the rock and blessed it with sage smoke. As he placed it upon the skull of a dead bison, the rock again began to sing and glow red hot, and there in the center of the rock was a great herd. The young woman and her people learned the song that night. And when morning came and the first man emerged from the teepee, the bison again covered the great plain. European bison, like the ones in this cave painting, have been hunted to near extinction. While small populations of European bison remain, the North American bison exists in much larger numbers. There are now an estimated 200,000 bison found in parks and ranches from northern Alberta in Canada to Texas in the United States. Evolving over hundreds of thousands of years, the bison has become perfectly adapted to the extremes of North American climate and geography. Here, close to Yellowstone National Park in the United States, winter temperatures drop below minus 30. The bison advance through the snow, moving their massive heads from side to side, revealing grasses that are cloaked in up to a meter of snow. Their dense coats are made up of eight different types of hair, which together have excellent insulating properties. This dense, multi-layered fur provided Native Americans with winter robes that kept out even the bitterest cold. During exceptionally hard winters, bison can be caught in deep drifts. Unable to extricate themselves, they starve. However, only rarely does winter ravage bison populations. Protected by thick winter coats, they await the spring. Spring arrives to the North American prairie in a riot of color, and the bison have moved to their spring and summer feeding grounds. Amongst the flowers and grasses, the cinnamon-colored coats of newborn bison. Most are born in May and begin to move with the herd within a few hours of birth. At this time of year, adult bison are losing their winter coats. The fur seems to peel off, almost like sheared wool.
Rolling in wallows aids in removing the thick coat and also covers the bison in dust that provides some protection from flies. These wallows created by rolling bison catch rain and become tiny water reservoirs for bison and other prairie animals. Bison hooves also break up dry, hard soil, allowing water to penetrate deep into the ground to germinate grasses and flowers. These wallows also make a cool bed for tired calves. By June, the calving season is almost over. At only one month old, the calves already have the beginnings of what will become substantial horns. From birth, young bison learn their mother's individual scent and call and follow them as the herd grazes slowly back and forth across a sea of grasses. Bison will walk many miles a day to drink, and in ponds like this one, they will only drink. Unlike cows, bison do not defecate in water. This ensures a fresh water supply. The shape of a bison's horns is one way to tell its age. The more curved the horn, the older the animal. Bison have been called natural engineers. Native Americans followed bison trails over long distances, not only to cull the herds, but also because the bison trails were the paths of least resistance across the plains. Early surveyors plotting the course of what would become a transcontinental railroad followed bison trails for miles, unable to improve upon the gradient. In 1700, there were between 30 and 70 million bison on the continent, from northern Canada well into the southern central United States. 100 years later, they were almost extinct. Millions of bisons were slaughtered, their carcasses left to rot by the side of newly constructed railroads. The railroad encouraged the wholesale slaughter, and the killings took on a macabre atmosphere of a cheerful Sunday outing. The purpose of the butchery was not to rid the continent of bison, but to displace and control Native Americans. Without the bison, the nations of the plains lost their livelihood. Eventually, the vast majority of Native Americans were moved onto reservations, and their ancient way of life, like the bison, was gone. Bison bone was sold by weight for pennies a pound as fertilizer. The endless supply of bones made many a frontier millionaire. As the bison disappeared, the men who carried out the killing and those who opposed them entered into American folklore. Their names still conjure up images of the Wild West. General Custer. Buffalo Bill. Sitting Bull. The illustrated journals of the day recorded the bison's demise. Chaboni, a peace chief of the Patuatomi Nation, said in 1827, in my youthful days, I have seen large herds of bison on these prairies, but they are no more. In the past, the 
Sunni people believed that performing this song would help to save the bison. Members of the Zuni nation continue to perform this bison song to preserve the species and their own sacred traditions. When George Catlin painted this portrait of a Mandan warrior in the end of the 19th century, bison numbers had dwindled to a few thousand. Today, across North America, the bison have returned. There are more than 200,000 bison on native land, ranches, and protected parkland. The bison and Native Americans are beginning to reclaim their splendid past. It's late summer, the beginning of the rut, and the giant males are about to begin battling for the right to mate. Groups of male bison spend most of the year outside the herd of females and calves. But at this time of year, the males penetrate the herd, searching out females who are ready to mate. A male bison tests a female's readiness to mate by nuzzling her urine. Receptors on the roof of the bison's mouth sense the female's hormones and send a message to the brain. Having found a female in heat, a male bison will follow her, sometimes for days, until she is ready to mate. This behavior, called tending, is also a means of ensuring that she does not mate with another male. For most of the year, bison herds seem slow and peaceful. This careful tending of a female is the preamble to the coming battle. Males paw at the ground and mark their territory with urine. As more and more males arrive at the herd, the tension increases as males try to mark out and hold territories. Inevitably, the battles begin, and males weighing up to 2,000 kilos will run head-on at each other with incredible speed. Male bison reach sexual maturity at about two years of age, but will not take part in the rut until they are five or six years old. The aim of these battles is to almost pin the opponent's head to the ground. The victor will be the one who is young enough to have the strength and old enough to have the strategy.
shaking their heads like dazed prize fighters, the conflict comes to an end when one of the combatants concedes and moves away. During the rut, a male bison can lose one-fifth of its body weight. Death is rare. Injury, however, is not. The act itself is remarkably brief. Observation has shown that although the males compete ferociously, in the end the females decide whether or not to engage in mating. With the rut over, calm returns to the herd, and the cycle of birth will begin anew next spring. The renaissance of the bison has prompted some conservationists to call for parts of the Great Plains to be restored to the bison. They suggest that huge tracts of prairie be returned to a pre-industrial state and the bison allowed to roam unfettered and their populations allowed to increase. What is more likely is a strange marriage between capitalism and tradition. Native peoples have begun to re-establish bison on reservation land. Ranchers are beginning to realize that bison are easier to keep and their beef fetches a higher price at market than cattle. The Denver Buffalo Company in Colorado does a thriving business in bison. The quintessential symbol of the frontier, the bison is sculpted and painted. And its image sells everything from jeans to dog biscuits. Commerce has played a significant role in the return of the bison, as it did in its near destruction. September on the plains 200 years ago must have looked very much like this. Calm has been restored to the herd. The rut is over. Calves born in spring have more than doubled their weight. And the coats of the adults are beginning to thicken in preparation for the coming winter. Pronghorned deer move through bison territory away from their summer feeding grounds. Today, whether on ranches, reservations, or parks, the renaissance of the bison is restoring a balance to the landscape. And the air resonates with a bison song of the Osage people. I rise, I rise. I whose tread makes the earth rumble, I rise, I rise. I in whose humped shoulder there is power, I rise, I rise. The nation has returned, and once more there is a reverence for the totem of the prairie.